Ever since Lisa made the propeller for our toy airplane that we made for Maker's Care. <laughs> That's my propeller! <laughs> <laughs> she's expressed an interest in doing other stuff with our scroll saw. So she's going to get started on doing that. And because we have all of this variety of different saw blades to deal with, and she'll be using them all, I decided to make a container for the saw blades so that she'll be more easily able to keep up with them. And uh, doing a little research, I found that there's a pattern for a container like I would like to have. It's in shop notes number 34 on page 4. It was a reader's tip submitted by Art Dimmock of Barton, New York. And we are going to do essentially the same thing. Uh, Art used three quarter inch PVC tubing. We're going to use half inch instead. And there will be some other differences, but the gist of it will be the same. So if you want to look that up, shop notes number 34, page 4. Let's see how long to cut the PVC. These guys are five and a quarter, so it looks like six inches would be just fine. You know what this is? It's a pipe cutter. It doesn't have a cord or a switch on it. The whole thing's operated manually. We used to use these back in the days when we were still hunting mammoths. With this pipe cutter, the idea is that you screw the blade down against the pipe and then go around the pipe once, screw it down a little tighter, go around the pipe again, screw it down a little tighter, and you keep going like that, scoring deeper each time until you have finally gone all the way through the pipe. How about that? See how wide the wooden circles that make up the base and the top should be. Looks like four would be just right for that. The position of the blade in the cutter will change depending on what you want to do. If you want to cut a hole in the wood and what was in the hole is not important, then you leave the blade like this with the point to the outside. It will cut a smooth line on the hole and what was in the hole will look like this, but we don't care because we don't want that. If it's what is in the hole that you want, for example, a circle of some kind, a wheel or whatever, then you turn the blade to the inside. The cut looks like this, with this rough angled part to the outside, and what was in the hole will be smooth, 90 degrees, and look like this. So we turn the blade so that the point that was on the outside is now on the inside. And now we want to make sure that we've got two inches from here to the center point on the drill bit. got to move about an eighth of an inch. And because we're not going for really meticulous work, we'll accept eyeballing it on the two. Now let's mark off where the circles are going to be. Allow a little room for waste over here and on this side. The reason we're drawing this circle is so that we can draw four lines through it, vertically, horizontally, and two at crossed angles. These lines will bisect the holes that we need to drill for our PVC pipe, so they give us a start on finding that location. I'm going to cut my circles close to the edge of the stock so as to waste as little of it as I can. And I want to use the T-track to hold it down but it doesn't reach right now. So I'm going to move the table around the column to bring the T-track closer to the cutter. The support bracket is what holds the table in place and it's held by the lock. 
the column lock, which if you undo it will allow you to raise or lower it, but will also allow you to turn it horizontally around the column. This work table isn't actually part of the drill press. It's something that I got at Rockler. I'll move it out of the way so that it's easier to see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to spin the table horizontally and the rack moves around the column as I do so. Now I want to lock it in place. And now we'll put the work table back on it again. We need some waste underneath our board so that we don't drill a hole down through it and into the work table. This is a piece of scrap I'm going to use to make a quick jig. Something to hold our circles in place when we drill holes in them. We don't want them touching each other, but we do need to leave a little space between the edge of the circle and the PVC. Twenty-seven thirty seconds. I have a seven eighths, which would be twenty-eight thirty seconds. I'm going to come in 3 16 from the side and we've got 7 8 for the tubing. Uh, half of that would be 7 16 plus 3 16 10 16 or 5 8 So 5 8 is what we want to come in from the side. And that will be the center, that will be the point that we drill at. I've got the point of the bit right where it should be. We'll just hold that in place while we lock everything down. And now we should be able to spin everything around in the jig. And rather than having to mark it on each line, we can just count on the fact that we're the same distance each time.
The bit that's in the center of our circle cutter is a quarter inch bit. That's good because a quarter inch hole is what we want here because we're going to put a quarter inch threaded rod through it. So I'll just clean up some burrs here a little bit. I'm going to use a lock nut on one end of the threaded rod. And on the other end, I'm going to use a knob so that we can adjust it and tighten and loosen it. And because I'm going to use this lock nut on one end, I'd like to put a hole part of the way through here so that the lock nut sinks up inside it and we can still set it flat. So that's what I'm going to do now. There's something to consider here. The Forstner bit has a point on it to get it started. And because we already have a quarter inch hole drilled here, the point isn't going to sit in the wood and drill. It could uh, cause the wood to wobble. So what I'm gonna do is use the jig that we used earlier to hold it in place. And uh, I've also got to set the depth so that it only goes part way through. So let me tend to that real quick. Getting the point lined up with the center of the hole is just a matter of eyeballing. And we're counting on the jig to hold it in place and not let it scoot around. Success. Now let's see if my lock nut is going to hide down in the hole. Yes, it is. Very good. How long should we cut the rod? Remember that the PVC is six inches. We've got to allow a little bit for the base because we didn't go all the way through. We need to allow for our spinning cover. And we need a little bit for this knob to get a hold. So let's go seven inches. Let's do a trial assembly. Not sure how far down these guys need to go. We'll have to adjust that. We'll let that sit overnight so the glue will dry good. Hopefully it'll dry so tight that these guys won't have a tendency to wobble. At the last minute, I decided I wanted to put a nut and washer on the inside of the bottom. Since I had already glued the PVC to the bottom, this was gonna be a little trickier than usual, but I managed to get it done. In Art Demick's design, he had little windows cut in each of these pieces of PVC so that you could see the blade. Not big enough for it to fall out, but big enough to see the teeth and know what kind it was. 
So I asked Lisa if she wanted me to put windows on hers, and she said no. She thought that she would rather just mark it. So she said that she thought she would mark it on the edge or else on the PVC itself. We'll see how that goes. We may wind up cutting windows in it yet. Be sure to subscribe to Wood Tools Workshop on YouTube so that you can get notifications of new videos as we upload them. Also, I'll be putting a parts list, a diagram, and instructions on how to build one of these on our website, woodtoolsworkshop.com. Check it out.